Good evening, everyone. Time for another member update. Now, this is the one minute chart of silver. Let's put the volume on here. This is a very interesting one. You see that last night around 3 a.m., we had this huge smackdown. Uh, let's see how the big, big the volume was. Well, 35,000 ounces uh, in just that one minute. So that's, that's pretty big. Uh, multiple 30 plus thousand ounces. And then we had one near the market open and then just kind of this sideways movement. But this bizarre type of up and down action, I, I don't think that anybody probably got a chance to stack. Uh, you literally had one, two, three, four minutes, but really only one minute with this price at 15.50 and actually um, less than a minute. It could have been seconds that you had, you know, that price. And that's what happens. We saw it before on the other strange outlier that we had uh, smacked. And I think it may have to go to the eight hour to see that one that marked that low. You can see that it didn't spend hardly any time at those prices. And this type of bizarre behavior, that's not a real market. That's a fake market. So what are they doing? I don't know. It, uh, it kind of looks like they're rolling over. If we pull out farther, let's say maybe to the hour, it looks kind of like a rolling over pattern, but they're, it's like they're reluctant to go much lower. It's almost like they don't know how many buyers are going to come in. So really interesting stuff going on. We're still watching the Lunar Series. There's You can still get the half ounce goats for around 12 bucks. I did see them selling on eBay for as much as 14 so I think they're going to run out soon. I can't say exactly when, but I think they're going to run out soon. So definitely keep an eye out for the half-ounce goats, see if they drop the price, also the two-ounce goats. And there really aren't too many others that are very good bargain. Now, I wanted to take you to an article from Jason Hommel. I don't know if most of you remember Jason Hommel. He's been around the silver game for a long time, and he's not really... Uh, a part of it anymore. We're going to talk about that. But before we do that, I want to read the article here that he wrote. This is just one. He wrote many all the way back to 2009, even before that. Because um, I remember getting his letters coming out during the Bear Stearns takedown when silver was taken down from 21 down to 850. I remember him sending out an, an alert that March. So that was March of 2008. But this is Silver Market Facts from 2013. We're going to read some of these and then talk about Jason and what happened. The silver market is tiny. About 700 million ounces of silver are mined each year worldwide. Now that's up to about 850 or 9. About 200 million ounces is recycled. About 100 million ounces from other sources like governments. That's the supply side. At $20 an ounce, this is a $20 billion annual market. And that's pretty close to where we are now because that 100 million ounces isn't coming from government anymore. The recycling's gone down some too. So they're mining more, but there's less coming in from those other two sources. On the demand side, most all or more of the silver that is mined each year is consumed and used by industry. Only 100 million ounces is bought by investors. Now, you know that one's up to about 250 now, 2 to 250. At $20 an ounce, that's $2 billion. $2 billion physical silver bought per year by investors. These numbers don't change much from year to year, and two companies produce similar numbers, which you can look up at the silver survey company, CPM Group and SilverInstitute.com. I know the 100 million ounces of silver investment demand is real, both from other sources and my own experience. The U.S. Mint produces about 40 million Silver Eagle coins each year. The Silver Eagles are not even half of the silver that we sell at J.H. Mint. So you can see this is when he was running his mint. We're going to talk about that J.H. Mint, Inc. So about 100 million ounces is right, about right for the investor demand. Those are real numbers. The good news for America is that USA's silver buying is nearly the entire world's silver investment demand. It's all right here in America. As silver stays in America, that bodes well for the future wealth of America. So while I trust the data of the silver survey companies, I know that they are biased against silver because they mislabel investment demand for silver as surplus. But the reality is that surplus denotes something left over leftover war gear or material produced that is unwanted, but silver bought by investors is not unwanted, not at all. The reality is there's not nearly enough silver for investors. This is There is a dire shortage of 
silver for investors. The proof is in the numbers from the BIS, the Bank of International Sentiments. If you, if you remember, Jason was actually the first one to break this BIS data point. And also, if you recall, after he had pointed it out and a bunch of people started linking that BIS data, they actually changed it on their report back at that time. The BIS figures show that BIS banks owe their clients about $150 billion worth of silver, other precious metals. That's the category they use. This is 70 times as much as annual investment demand. You might not think that is unusual. However, in a six-month time frame a few years ago, their figures increased from $100 billion to $200 billion. There's no possible way on earth, in my opinion, that banks could go out and locate and purchase $100 billion worth of silver or 4,000 to 8,000 million ounces for their clients who bought that much silver for investment purposes. That would have been about seven to 13 years worth of world silver mine output. It was well over 100 times as much as a real world physical silver demand. Banks such as Morgan Stanley confirmed this. They were caught not going out into the market and buying silver for their clients, and yet they were charging clients a 1% annual storage fee. You guys remember that lawsuit? and they were busted on their silver that was not in the vaults because there was no silver and there was no vaults. In their defense, Morgan Stanley said that they what they did was nothing unusual, but rather business as usual among investment banks. So to charge storage fees on silver that you're not storing. Again, only $2 billion worth of money is actually flowing into the physical silver market. Yet up to $150 billion flows into paper silver markets as is kept track of by the BIS. This is over-the-counter, non-transparent market, not LBMA market, not COMEX markets. This is over-the-counter markets. This over-the-counter market is huge. And before 2009, it seemed that nobody in the gold world knew where to go to get some of this data on the opaque over-the-counter market. Don't believe me? See it for yourself. Here's the latest BIS report. And it goes into the derivatives. That means that the BIS banks have derivatives on their books with outstanding values of $157 billion worth of silver, meaning they owe their clients that much worth of silver at roughly today's silver prices, or maybe in $30 an ounce silver prices back in 2012. In my opinion, no entity on earth can go out and buy $157 billion worth of silver when the real silver market can barely handle the $2 billion of investor demand that exists today and regularly squeezes it and causes dramatic shortages in supply and long wait times. What is a billion in context? The Fed is buying $80 billion worth of bonds each month to help prop up the bond market prices and help keep interest rates low. What do you think would happen if the Fed bought $80 billion worth of silver each month to help keep silver prices up? What do you think will happen when the public starts buying $80 billion worth of silver each month to help protect themselves from the inflation that's being caused by the Fed printing up $80 billion each month to prop up the bond market? We regularly have people calling us up saying they want to sell bonds to buy silver. The banks will use every trick in the book to keep you in bonds. They will tell you that you can't get a safer investment than bonds. They will tell you that you have to take a penalty for cashing in your bonds early without mentioning what that penalty will be. They will tell you that you have to give up interest for about a year if you cash in your bonds early. If pressed, they will admit that it's usually less than 1%. Meanwhile, silver prices are being artificially created by computers that paint the tape on paper markets and move as mu- by as much as 5 to 9% in one day. It's almost as if we have a dictator shouting in a shrill voice, silver prices today will be, and smashing a gavel to announce the dictated silver price. But it's not that obvious, of course. Silver prices are set by a panel of banks and the high-frequency comp- computer trading by the banks back and forth. Therefore, I cannot predict in advance what the silver price will be, nor can I make any short-term prediction from six months to two years, which are all short-term. I can only know that in the long run, investors will surely wake up at some point and buy far more than the $2 billion of silver or 100 million ounces per year, but more like 100 times as much for starters. I only know that 
investors who have only slightly woken up but who continue to trust their investment banks who lie to them to buy silver for them, that they're being completely defrauded and that their investment demand for silver is being fully diverted into paper and away from real silver. I only know that at some point the system will break and will break hard, and when it does, silver prices will rapidly begin to exceed $500 to $1,000 per ounce. A paltry $180 billion worth of investment demand for silver, which is a paltry 1% of money in the banks, will send silver prices soaring to $500 an ounce just to start the major run-up in silver prices to come. Assume 300 million ounces of silver is bought by that much, and you can see that $180 billion divided by $300 million is six hundred dollars silver prices are not being driven by dollar strength against other currencies silver prices are not even being driven by investment demand or industrial demand silver prices are being driven by the lies told by the liars and the lies they tell on the painted ticker tape on paper silver trades driven by computers the major driver of silver prices is that well up to 150 billion dollars of actual silver demand from people who have actually instructed their brokers to buy silver for them has been diverted away from silver through fraud. The major driver of silver prices is that well up to 150 billion dollars of actual silver demand, he says it again, has been diverted through fraud. Yes, I recopied that paragraph twice on purpose so you might get the point. Those are all verifiable numbers. Check the BIS link above. Frauds tend to end suddenly and badly when people wake up to the fraud. It's been four years since I brought this BIS fraud to the attention of the people who read my email list. I do not, e I do not know how else to get this message out other than by repeating myself to the point where my readers are getting bored of hearing it, while at the same time my readers are indicating to me that sometimes they still do not understand. Some do get it, of course, the buyers, but interestingly not all silver buyers have even heard of these wonderful facts about silver. Well, those are the big facts about the silver market. How about some small facts? In 2003, investment deceivers such as the shills who work for the investment banks who are all short silver were wildly screaming about how silver jewelry scrap would flood into the market if silver prices moved up from $4 to $7 an ounce and thus cap the price. That never happened. Even today it can't happen. Not through my shop. Take a silver ring for example. We don't buy them. We can't. It's not worth it. Silver prices are at $20 an ounce. A typical silver ring has less than a tenth of ounce of silver in it. Thus a ring has $2 worth of silver. If I were to buy at my standard rates, I'd offer a dollar twenty, but be able to pay for the paperwork to handle the trade. The seller of one silver ring would have to pay me ten dollars just to take it. That's completely uneconomic. Furthermore, a typical silver ring retails for about twenty dollars. This is well over ten times higher than the contained silver value at today's silver price. The twenty dollars barely pays for the craftsmanship and the cost of retailing the silver rings, and the actual silver is barely even a cost. Silver prices would have to exceed two hundred dollars an ounce for the seller of a silver ring to break even, and that's even if they could sell silver in ring form at spot prices, which is not realistic because rings are not a fungible shape for silver like coins are. And silver prices would have to exceed $400 an ounce for the seller of a silver ring to be able to realistically break even if their findings were given, giving a 50% payout on silver scrap. This is an example and the reason that silver in jewelry form or in tableware form is for all intents and purposes utterly consumed and completely removed from the silver investment market. Once silver is sold as jewelry or tab tableware, it does not come back as scrap for up to 10 or 20 years or even 100 years. Even then, there must be economic ways of recovering the scrap, and this silver scrap buyer, J.H. Mint Inc., does not even waste time with silver rings. We are happy to buy silver spoons and fork sets, typically 60% of the contained silver value. Silver handles on knives are not worth the time to recover. Silver candles are typically not worth the time to recover. Silver plated items cannot be recycled for the silver content. Ah, uh, here's another little gem for the silver bugs. There's no discernible difference between 999 silver and 9999 silver. I finally I finally have several sources that back up my statement. First, in any melt bucket, all the impurities in the silver will rise to the top and can be skimmed or blasted off of the top of the molten silver, but the melt bucket does not refine the silver. That's done through electrolysis. It's therefore the same process for 999 as 9999 silver. The difference is only in the label and the marketing. In my experience, 
well-researched opinion. I tested 999 silver on an x-ray fluorescence tester and it read out at 9999. I've asked several mints and refiners and industry experts all the same question and they all say the same thing. They don't know any difference between 39s and 49 silver because all the same reasons because of all the same reasons because it's all the same process except for the final stamp at the end of the line. So that's kind of interesting. I didn't know that. What is measurable? The U.S. Mint says they're making about 40 million ounces of silver eagles each year worth less than a billion dollars. The BIS says the BIS banks owe clients about $157 billion worth of silver. These are the facts. You do the math and you tell me where you think silver prices are headed. So th that's Jason Hummel. Now he had, this is his, uh, this was his store, J.H. Mint, Grass Valley. And uh, he was buying and selling silver. Uh, we can go here and I can show you this is the um, the Wayback Machine entry for uh, the JH Mint and you can see it says right here from March 25th 2014 JH Mint and Auburn Coin Shop may reopen sooner with a new owner but JH Mint is closed we recommend con contacting mom's silver shop and he has uh, eBay shop that his his uh, mom was selling silver on. So what happened to Jason Hummel? Well, first of all, if you look at the silver stock report, um, the latest in 2014, he's gone back to silver stock, right? He's gone back to this mining stock. He initially was promoting mining stocks. It's actually, you can't find it. Uh, well, here's 2008 and earlier. So let's see if we can find him. He actually goes way back. So you can see he originally started with silver stocks. And what happened to silver stocks? Well, silver stocks got utterly destroyed by the silver manipulation. So probably most of the silver stocks he was following and recommending got destroyed sometime in, I think 2008 is when he switched and just went with silver and just started doing a silver thing. Um, the, that's sort of kind of like Andy Hoffman. He was also a precious metal miner analyst. So Jason got out of the game. It appears that that silver facts actually is after the 2013 SmackDown. I want to take you to the thread on um, the Kitco forum, and this is uh, Jason. Hommel calls it quits. Unfortunately, Jason Hommel threw in the towel due to the silver smackdown in April 2013 to June 2013 and closed down the JH Mint. If you go to his website, JH Mint, you'll see he's going out of business. His analysis on the fundamentals was correct, but no one could have predicted the 400 ton naked short selling at 3 a.m. in 2013 unless they were an insider. I guess in the end, Jason closing down the JH Mint is a sign of a bottom soon. Although I think they're going to try and run all the stops at 1,000, 1,100 or more time to destroy the bulls and then they let the prices rise. So that's the speculation. Now here's another one. Jason was one of the original silver bulls at the very beginning of the bull market in 2003. And he warned everyone in real estate was going to collapse in advance. If you research all his old articles and Ted Butler's articles, you'll find their analysis was correct. The problem was he was way too early to the game. I think he will be vindicated in the end by 2032. <laughs> okay. Uh, there's another guy on here who says he thinks that Jason was defrauded. And if you remember, we had uh, the thing with Chris Dwayne, and you remember what happened with his mint. So that that might be something. Let me see if I can find that. There was also kind of a scandal with him. I think there was a problem with his wife. I'm not going to go into that. That's nobody's business but his. But uh, I can't find that here. But he apparently um, got ripped off by a partner. That's what's being report reported. Yeah, and I'm not finding that here. So what's the upshot of all this? Well, as I've pointed out before, when you're dealing with manipulated silver, if you're going to go into the business of buying and selling silver, you're putting yourself in a very difficult position. And here's why. If you're going to have a shop that has silver where people can come in and buy the silver, 
you're going to buy that silver at a given price. And that means that you're taking a market risk. That means you're holding inventory. The more inventory you hold, the more risk you're taking. Because people aren't, even though the paper price is a fake price, the paper price still determines the real price in these shops because they, people still go by those prices. So if you get a massive smackdown, let's say, like they were saying it was 2013, let's say you built up all your inventory right in there and then this massive smackdown happened. Now, what do most places do? Atmex, Provident, JM Bullion. Well, they hedge. They hedge their silver and gold by using futures and options, by using derivatives, the very derivatives that Jason was talking about. So is it possible that he tried to call a bottom in silver and was wrong? That's quite possible. That's the danger because you have to put out a tremendous amount of capital to hold inventory. And if you're wrong, you're stuck. You have to shut down. Now, he might have just shut down and kept the silver. I don't know. But uh, my guess is that he probably didn't want to play their derivatives game. And he probably made a big bet and was wrong. So that's the risk. If you're going to get into the buying and selling of silver business, you have to hedge. And unfortunately, those markets that you hedge in are corrupt. We saw that especially with... Um, I'm sorry, I lost the futures trader right now. Oh, MF Global, because that was a huge futures brokerage operation for a lot of hedgers, and they just shut down and took billions of dollars. So at that point, you have to make a decision. Either you're going to run your silver coin shop unhedged and take the risk of a big loss in your capital, or you're going to have it hedged and take the risk of them blowing up your futures account and stealing all that money you can see it's a tremendous risk. So it makes sense to me that uh, Jason probably shut down because he got trapped in that little game. These are the types of games that are destroying the industry. They're destroying the miners. They're also destroying the coin shops. If you remember, Tolving also recently went out of business. I don't know if that was a lack of hedging or if perhaps he was running some type of pyramid scheme, but uh, that was a big scandal as well. So Keep on stacking is the only lesson, but you need to be very, very careful if you're going to get in the business of buying and selling silver. And we'll talk to you next time.